Sigo. Buenos dias, amigos. Tar and glue testing. So I'm rolling the camera for two purposes. One, I'll put an uncut video on the backup channel so you can watch this raw. And I'll use some of this footage as overlays in my main video on the tar and glue. So we have down here a piece of polycarbonate. Fresh brand new polycarbonate. And touch it. Don't touch the surface you're testing. Um, right, what we're gonna do, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, just, just checking. We're gonna break this test panel down into eight sections. Uh, yeah, we don't need to we don't need to do a control because we're not gonna be putting it on every bit of the panel. Um, and it doesn't need to be exact, we're only going to be using the centre um, piece to test. Okay, so let's get a shot of that. So that's sectioned off, good. Right, let's write the name of the products out or we're going to be in, we'll be in trouble. Quite rightly so. TARDIS, try and do this small. TARDIS. Koch. Let's call it Yule. Uh, car Chem. Uh, G Tech. G Tech. G Tech, I spelt it wrong. Close enough. G Tech. There we go. Gion. Gion. Love these names. Brand name's important, isn't it? Brand name's important. Gion's a good brand name, I like that. Built Hamburg, it's a good brand name. It's like this sort of double barrel. Two names, Built Hamburg. Uh, what else? Auto Glim, it's a great name. Lots of auto, lots of detailing companies with auto at the start, isn't it? How many can you get? How many can you get? Auto Glim, Auto Glands, Auto Finesse. Auto Perfect, there's an Auto Perfection, Auto Bright, uh, Valet Pro, that's not one obviously, I'm just writing that down, Valet Pro, any other Auto, Auto, probably like Auto, is there an Auto Magic, Auto, <laughs> I'm running out of Autos, right, that's the products, now what we're going to do is just take these little applicators is nothing fancy we're just gonna saturate oh, we do we need these these will just allow us to control putting a film of product on the test panel if we don't use an applicator you know we've got to be spraying them with different sprayers some that don't have sprayers so this just allows us if we saturate the applicator get a wet applicator and put it on then take it off we'll get roughly the same amount of film um, for all of the products. It doesn't matter which one goes on first and which one goes on last because we're going to be putting it on and leaving these products to flash off. Okay? Right. So let's... I'm going to make a bit of a mess here. Oh, it's alright. Right, let's stay away from that. I want these to be soaking wet with products. Okay, so you can see my hands are a little bit wet. We're going to plonk that down. It's completely saturated. We just plonk it there. If I can see, we've got a good amount of film. Just thinking, should I take it off now? I should, shouldn't I? Because if I leave it on there, then it's not going to evaporate, so it creates a slight disadvantage. So on and off. And I can see, let's bring the camera in. I've got to get this footage as part of the reason of doing this. Hard to see it. There, there's our little film of product there. So we've got a wet film there, which is great. Spin this. Right, get back, get back. It's not me, I want to be on the product. That's better. Right, auto glim. That's it. It's nice when there's a bit of dye in the product actually. 
So that's nice and saturated. On we go. Stick that down. Slightly less honky, honky tonk smell. Gimme, gimme, gimme the honky tonk bean. Built handbar. Gimme, gimme. Saturated. Get that on there. Sure it's stuck down. I can see the, the applicator soaking wet. So we're going to get a nice wet film of the product. Just give it a second. The dye in this Geon product sinks to the bottom. <laughs> what is that? Gimme, gimme, gimme the honky tonk bun. Geon, the one thing they don't always get right is sometimes they don't put any sort of. I suppose you get a spray with this. Okay, take that, take that comment back. <laughs> I was about to talk crap. There was another product where they did. Oh, it was. I don't know what it was, but there's nothing in here. You can tip them over, but there might have been a sprayer with it. Probably was. Okay. Give me. Oh, smell the limonene. I love the smell of limonene. Love it. Really breaks down that solvent smell. Okay, off of this. Next up, the G Tech, the G to the Tech to the Ick G Technic. It's got this annoying little bit of paper in there. I'm guessing that's some sort of part of the seal, so I don't want to take it off in case I get a runny bottle. I want to get this nice and wet. That's that's lovely. Oh, that's nice and wet. Right, on there, push it down. Give me that won't need as long and off. That's it. Just want a little bit of a film. Get that one there. And that one really does hold got petrol. Next up we have two applicators there, don't we that one? The car chem one. This has some bits of surfactant in the bottom that won't emulsify. Like little, they look like marbles or bits of wax in it or something, but it's just a liquid that won't mix with the hydrocarbons. Oh, that stinks of petrol. They, they smell virtually the same. They're all, I mean, they're all hydrocarbons most of these. So, but the Geon just having that scent to it makes them slightly less unpleasant to use. Same with this citrus one. It's more pleasant to use, but it's got delimonene and citrol in it, so you get. The, a bit of a lemon freshness to it. It's that, it's like petrol. I suppose some of you won't really care about that, will you? But I do. Uh, Koch, right, keep away from these little patches. This Koch one, I thought smells of acetone, but it's just a, it's a strong fragrance. Yeah, it's a strong fragrance, like a cherry pear drop, I think just designed to mask it. We've got a good amount of this. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Oh, honky tonk. Gimme, gimme. And the last one. The T to the A to the R to the Dis. Tardis. Good amount of it on there. On it goes. Nice and wet. Give me, give me, give me the honky tonk man. Oh yeah. And off. Okay, that's just. Oh. <laughs> Should glove up really on doing this. Problem is you can't operate the camera. Always get. Whenever I get do a video, and I'm not wearing gloves. I get some bloke. You're not wearing gloves. <laughs> You've got to operate the camera. You can't with the rubber gloves on if you've got to, well you can't if you want to use the touch screen, screen functions. Anyway, let's bring this off. 
Gimme, gimme. So you can see the footprint. That one's gone already. Footprint, 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 footprint. And every single product is going to be allowed to vape off and dry. It's quite interesting as well. If you watch them, you can spot the ones that vape quicker. Let's turn the intensity up. Boom. Oh, no. And I'm just going to press this for a picture. Okay, let's wrap this wrap. <laughs> let's wrap this video up. All this solvent that is everywhere is getting up my schnozzle. Be careful; it does affect you. If you're in here doing this testing for like half an hour, and all these solvents are sort of over the worktops and stuff like that, it gets up, gets up your nose, and you feel it later on. So we've tested. Let's put this down. I've tested tar film removal, I've tested adhesive film removal, um, and in this instance the tests that we're doing are really valid, you know, they're sometimes tests are a bit dodgy, aren't they? <laughs> but taking a film of bitumen off of a car with these tar and glue removers is a, is a, is a really good test, and removing adhesive, you know, from a vinyl wrap is a really good test because that's what you use them for. So it's a bit easier to test these on this thing in a lab environment. I haven't really got much tar on my car. So um, the, fi the final thing I want to test and explore in the video is if there's a trade-off to just, the, you know, I don't want it to be just the powerful products that win. I want to consider, do these powerful products, you need to be more careful with them. Will they damage polycarbonates? Even though you're not supposed to use them on plastic, but I've tried testing them on clear coats and they vape off without doing any damage in this cold winter so I can't I need to use a softer material to see if there's a difference but if it does damage the polycarbonates got to be careful to say that you shouldn't use these products on polycarbonates um, so it's not saying the product's bad but it's just a test designed to see if we can find the balancing point where they will cause damage so this is simulating if you've got a bit of overspray onto your headlights what it would do because this is a piece of polycarbonate so you get the idea uh, what's, what am I expecting? I'm expecting it to, these products to damage the surface of the polycarbonate. Um, you know, melt it a little bit. So very interesting. We're going to have to get the light on it carefully to see, you know, see the damage and all that sort of stuff. So I'm going to come back in about half an hour to an hour, see what the score is. So that's it for this video. I thought this is a behind the scenes channel, isn't it? So I thought I'd bring, bring you in behind the scenes and gather some footage at the same time. So. Thanks for uh, watching, guys. Don't forget to subscribe, and, and uh, I'll see you soon.